Hey, what's happening guys? Thanks for stopping back into the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. Today we're gonna be stopping back into our Electrical Diag Series Part 3. We've already gone through the basics of how a circuit works, how the 12 volt systems work, and the basics of the tools and how to diagnose them with Ohm's Law, some uses with tools in the test lights, and some meter use as well. Today we're gonna be going over the wiring diagrams, the components that are gonna be in those systems and the symbols that you're gonna see within the wiring diagrams that show those components as well. Let's go get into it. Now that we understand how these 12 volt systems work, now we're going to be able to see the next step of diagnostics. Once you understand that, okay, we have power, we have ground, we have something in the middle that uses the electric current, we need to know what those systems are and what those components are in between on the circuit. And when we're diagnosing things, we're gonna be looking at a lot of wiring diagrams. That's generally where people get really hung up in their diagnostic process. But I'm here to tell you that it's really not that hard. We're gonna have a look right here at our board here just to see the basic components that you're gonna see within those wiring diagrams. The first basic two items that you're gonna be seeing are the first things that we kinda of went over and that is your power source and your ground. In the battery section, you're gonna see one of these two symbols generally on the wiring diagrams. This one right here, which uh, shows you the different cells within a battery or just a nice little picture of a battery. Then after the entire circuit's uh, completed and you're going to the ground side, you're gonna see one of these two symbols for meaning ground. Now let's hop over to the car to look at those. This is gonna be our battery right here. Obviously we've got our positive and negative terminals which were shown on that diagram as well. And then back here, we're going to be able to see a couple of black wires going to the firewall. Those are chassis ground spots that would be corresponding to what a ground would look like on a wiring diagram. All right, now we'll fill in just a couple more of them and then we'll hop over to the car again as we fill a couple of these out. We've got a switch. This is gonna be generally like an ignition switch or a lock switch on your door. Some of those momentary on off switches. That's what that one's gonna mean right there. We also have to have our circuit breakers or our uh, fuses within this system to be able to have safety for overload conditions. We've got the fuse right there. And then we also have these circuit breakers, which are gonna be corresponded by one of these two symbols right here. Next is gonna be where our wiring is gonna intersect. That is gonna be our connection splice. You can see where the little dot is at right there. That's where things would come together and we would splice them together with either butt connectors or soldering. But again, that's gonna be in another class. Then we have the two little uh, arrows pointing here that's going to be your female and your male side of an inline connector so let's jump over and have a couple looks at these here in our fuse panel you can see all of these little small micro fuses and then j box fuses these are going to be our fuses right here this little metal one right here this is going to be a thermal circuit breaker now the difference between the fuses and your circuit breaker yes they're both going to be uh, protecting your circuit from over surges and such but the difference is once the fuses pop they have to be replaced uh, they're not reusable if the circuit breaker gets overloaded, it has a momentary connection that pops out of place, and then within a certain amount of time, it cools itself off, or it has a small little spring as a kind of like a timer, and it's going to eventually reset itself in place. So that's our fuses and circuit breakers. Now for the switches, you guys know that that one could be like uh, the door switch or anything right there. And then we wanna look at a couple of splices like we had back over here at our ground point where we have multiple wires going into the same exact uh, spot together. That's gonna be kind of a splice there or here with these battery cables where they all meet at one intersecting point. That would be a splice at that point. 
Connector wise with the two little arrows, that would be like a plastic connector where you're going to have a female and male side of a connector. The hard part when you're starting off in the automotive uh, world is to understand that there are probably hundreds of different connectors. And unfortunately, that's just gonna have to come with uh, a lot of experience in how to take these apart. A lot of them have all these little safety pins or connectors, some kind of a release tab. This one right here is gonna have an inline connector with a little push pin. You're gonna push on that one to be able to pull your connector apart and have a male side and a female side within the connector. The next line of these are gonna be pretty simple to go through as well, and it's things that we've kind of already gone through. We can see our lamp right here. We've got a single X within that little circle, or if you have a dual filament bulbs, you'll have like an oval with two X's inside of it. The X's are gonna be for your filament lamps. We can see our motor right here. That one's original. We're gonna make a circle and put an M inside of it. Not very hard right there. That's gonna be like your starter motor, might be a window motor, anything that uses uh, an electrical current motor, that's what that one's gonna be. Our resistors, you've got a sharp point squiggly line within the middle of your two intersecting lines. That one we will kind of show on the board here in a little bit, as well as our diodes. Now we haven't really talked about diodes before, and that's gonna be something that is almost like a safety point within a switch or, or a safety point within a circuit or a circuit breaker. It allows electricity to flow through the wire or flow through the diode going in one direction, but it does not allow it to go in the other. So if something was to go wrong, say within an ECU or somebody um, has a brain fart and hooks the battery up backwards, you're gonna have electricity going in one direction, but it does not allow it to go back the other way and ruin circuitry and uh, components. So that's what a diode is. The relay, we went through that one in the last episode. That one's pretty simple. Uh, a speaker, also, you guys know what a speaker is, know what that one does, make sound. Next one is going to be a potentiometer. Now when we're talking about a potentiometer, we've got our SP tools, uh, SP81444 light right here. Really nice little light and this one actually has a potentiometer built into it. How that's going to work is you've got power coming into one portion of the switch and then we've got a little dial or resistive switch to be able to control the amount of current or amperage that goes through, like a light or uh, like a throttle position sensor could be used as well. Uh, so we're gonna have like the off position right here and this dial, as we turn it, it's going to make the amperage going through that light more and more as we turn it up. So as we move that little um, knob, one side's gonna have more resistance which is gonna make less amperage go through. And as we turn the little switch to the right, that's gonna create less resistance and the light therefore is going to get brighter. Next up on our third line of items here, we've got a heater element. Now where you might you see a heater element uh, within an oxygen sensor, they have to have a coil of wire that is going to uh, once you add current to it, it's going to heat up. That's gonna heat up the O2 sensor to make it uh, conductive and be able to read the oxygen within the exhaust a lot easier. So you've got a heater element right there. Uh, an LED kind of looks like what we see over here with our diode, but it's within a circle. And we have a little arrow facing out of it. That just means there's light coming out of it. It is kind of like a resistive diode that creates light. So we saw an LED within our test light on the last video making a little light but it takes very little current to make that one light up. Now we've got our coil. Now the coil is pretty simple uh, on our little test platform up here. We're going to be seeing it here in a little bit where uh, it's going to be acting like our ignition coil on the test platform. Uh, that's going to have a large amount of current going through it and it's going to conduct electricity to a different format or spark within that coil. Next is going to be a solenoid. Now that one is using a couple of different things that we've already talked about. Uh, when we talked about relays, you had that coil winding that it's going to be uh, making an electric field, which then pulls the little switch over to engage an electrical current to another side of the switch about the same thing within a solenoid, except it's going to be doing some kind of an action or opening some kind of a valve. 
Let's jump on over to the car to see a solenoid. Really good option of a solenoid is gonna be like our purge and vacuum solenoids right here, right here on the motor and right here as well. You're gonna have one electrical connector right here that is going to have the coil winding that once it is electrically uh, activated, it is going to pull a little plunger towards that magnetic field and therefore open up a valve or open up um, the port that goes into the intake to allow evaporative gases to flow into an intake. Uh, the solenoids can be multiple things. We've also got uh, an IAC motor, which is kind of like a stepper solenoid. And then, like I said, all over the vehicle, we've got all kinds of different solenoids where you can use electric current with the magnetic force to open up some kind of valve or move some kind of arm. Next, we've got our fusible link. Now, this one is pretty much just like a fuse. It's going to be a one-time use circuit breaker that if for some reason it gets over current or the wrong direction of current, it will blow. Now the fusible link is a much larger version of a fuse. It's pretty much just going to be in line with a major battery cable, usually going from the alternator back to the battery to keep the overcurrent from occurring. Say if our internal portions of our alternator fail and it puts way too much current back into the battery, we don't want that bringing too much current and blowing our battery up. So that fusible link will then burn through on the inside and not let any current go through that large uh, diameter wire. Next to, uh, I don't know if you guys understand what a clock spring is. Uh, we've got this little coil winding right here. Now on a clock spring, that is gonna be between your steering wheel and the steering column. I'm not gonna be able to show it to you guys because it's kind of buried in the middle of a steering column, but it, this, it represents this winding would be like a coil ribbon winding of wiring. So that way I've got all these steering wheel functions and buttons on my steering wheel. And when I turn the steering wheel, it's going to kind of wind or unwind and allow me to still have the wrap of wiring between the column and the steering wheel without those wiring kind of breaking when I'm turning the wheel. So that's your clock spring. And then last thing here is gonna be just a generic gauge. Obviously we've got uh, wiring coming in. This is going to be some kind of a resistor within our gauge to be able to show a value of, you know, like on a fuel gauge, empty or full. And that's gonna be within the wiring diagram to show you what a gauge is. Now we're gonna jump into our E-Trainer Junior to show a couple of different circuits that are already all set up for us. This is gonna be like our fully running vehicle. Now we've got a couple of the different symbols that we've seen before. Here we've got our battery with the chassis ground coming to the battery. You guys can see a couple of other grounds within the circuit. We've got ground up here. We've got our diode. You guys know that little symbol there. Uh, we've got our relay with the coil winding and the little switch there. All these different little switches right here in the middle. That's going to be our switch showing. And then um, we've got a coil is going to be right here. doesn't show the real symbol, but we've seen that one before. And then this right here is going to be our throttle position sensor. This is going to be like our potentiometer within what we were showing earlier on there. Our fuel pump is gonna be our little motor up in this section. This is gonna be a fuel injector. And this little guy right here, that is gonna be an LED that we're gonna show you as well. So we've got a fuse. That is what our power is gonna go through, go into here and through through our battery. And then we've got our first switch. So this is gonna be like our ignition switch of our vehicle. Uh, if we go up here, our lights are able to turn on without the ignition switch being on. So we've got the power that comes on to our light. How you could see that one is going from our positive. We've got the little dot right here. That is going to uh, be significant because that is our connection or our splice point. We've got power coming in here and then splicing off three different directions where the light comes up following this line giving power then to this switch and this switch as well we have this one turned on which then feeds power across here to our bulb after it goes through our bulb and uses the electricity goes all the way through and eventually to our ground point right over here at ground so that's the general 
I guess, overview of a circuit. So let's do a couple more things on here to kind of turn our car on. We're going to then, once we put our key into like accessory mode, that would be like turning this switch on right here, which in turn uses two different things that we talked about. We added power through to here. Now this is a diode, so we can't make power go this direction. It won't go that way. It goes then to our solenoid winding right here and then to ground, which in turn pulls our little switch over here in the relay. The power is then able to go straight through to the relay and then into our motor, turns DC to AC current, which turns the motor and then once goes through, comes back out and then to a ground right there. So a fully functioning DC circuit where power is coming through the circuit through a relay, which allows us to use small electrical current to turn larger electrical current and turn our fuel pump motor on. Next, we're gonna go one further and we're actually going to start our vehicle. This right here you can see is our ignition switch. This will be putting the vehicle to run position and we're gonna have a lot of stuff going on here at the same point. So we'll kind of go through it. Once we start the vehicle, we've got a couple of different things going on. We've got power that comes through our switch up into a different splice point. Going to the right here, that is going to, if we had that switch turned off, would then bypass our little diode and then feed power to this portion of our circuit. So it doesn't matter if we have that one on or not, if we have it off, it will still feed power to that portion of the circuit. That shows your diode. Now we feed power over to this side here, which does a couple of different things. That is going to feed power up to this splice and up here to our fuel injector. Fuel injector is pulsing and you can see right here our little LED light, which is going to show pretty much how often our little fuel injector is going to be activating for. It also is feeding uh, power into our coil, which is taking the low amperage 12 volt circuit, uh, or the higher amperage 12 volt circuit, and ramping it up to a very much higher voltage, not very high amperage, but higher voltage. And that's how you can see, if we zoom in here, to see our spark plug is actually sparking. So we've got all of that stuff happening, and now we're going to take into account our throttle position sensor. Our throttle position sensor, once we start to turn this little potentiometer up, the vehicle is gonna know that it needs to go faster, so it is going to in use the ECU to inject fuel faster, and it needs to uh, spark our spark plug even faster as well. So as we turn this knob to the right, we can hear our RPM our injector and our ignition coil start to go faster. And if we pull it back down to the left, incrementally, it will go down to a lower RPM and fire our injector and our ignition coil a lot less. So that's gonna show you our potentiometer within the circuit. We've got a lot more things and resistors and we're actually even able to make different volts within this system through this awesome E-Trainer Junior circuit board. But again, that's a little bit farther past the basic Diag skills. So eventually we would be able to create faults in which we have, you can hear kind of misfires going on I believe this one would be like a weak coil. And we've got a different ground issue on another one as well. So very cool different things that we're gonna be eventually able to do with our E-Trainer Junior on our future videos. But just showing you guys the fully completed circuit on some of the main systems of a vehicle is really awesome to show you with this board. Will it hang from your beard? Yeah. Like if they have a little clip in them.
It'd just be convenient, you know? It's wherever I go, right? Those would sell, wouldn't they? You would think. The SP Beard Light. All right, guys, hopefully you got a lot of information from going through all of our individual components and then seeing those components within use here on our E-Trainer Junior board. It's gonna be some great information for you guys to build on here in your electrical diagnostic career in being an automotive technician. Now, I know this video probably showed and skipped a lot of things that some of the more advanced diagnostic techs are like, oh, you forgot to do this, you forgot to do, I understand. They took our yes! But I can't make these videos like 40 and 50 minutes because people just aren't gonna wanna sit through them. If you guys like the light that I showed you guys over here on the channel, you guys need to cruise over onto sptoolsusa.com's website, the SP81444 light. Use code RUSTBELT at checkout. That's gonna get you 10% off anything over at sptoolsusa's website. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. You guys stay awesome.